Hello! So first I'm going to show you guys this backdrop that I made for this video. I'm doing a little happy dance because I love how it turned out. Okay, for the base of this unicorn, I'm loving using this 3 8 brush from Aaliyah Brushes. I think that's how you say it. And I'm going to use this to create the base of this unicorn. It's got the perfect width for getting the right size of neck and muzzle for the unicorn, so I find it really helpful. Plus, because it's a flat brush, it can be used to smooth out the base and remove any streakiness. I'm loading up Leanne Courtney's Sweet Dreams Butterfly Split Cake on a splash sponge by Just Paint. If you wanna see more in depth how I do that, check out my last video. And with that, I'm just creating a line from the inner corner up. I'm gonna create another line coming from the inner corner, cutting through the eyebrow. And I'm gonna connect those, leaving quite a big indent here. And of course, what we do on one side, we'll do to the other side. They don't need to be super symmetrical, but they do need to go to the same height on the forehead. So I'm mapping that out. For the bottom wing, I'm starting out with a line that's parallel to that top wing and gradually bringing all of the colors in towards the inner corner. Making a line with that sponge coming down from the inner corner, and then one more in the middle of those two. And I'm going to leave it like that with two pretty big indents here. Doing that to the other side and then cleaning up with a slightly damp sponge. Using that same 3 8 brush, I'm going to create the hair using Neon Nirvana by Leanne Courtney. And you guys, she really just makes the best split cakes. I love every single one that she makes. This one stroke technique that I'm using for the hair is a little bit advanced and I will bring it down in full at the end of the video. Now I'm going to use the flat edge of the brush to create some lines in the wings. And again, if you want to see this more in depth, check out my last video. I will link that in the top right corner. I decided to add some slightly bigger lines pointing in towards the inner corner for some added interest. The base of the wings are done. Now we're going to move on to the witch hat. And I know I'm a broken record, but of course I'm going to uh, go into this a little bit more at the end of the video. Oh, and for the witch hat, I'm using that same brush, and this time I'm using Leanne's Emerald Garden. This is from her fairy collection. I'm adding some lines from the same split cake to the hair, but that's not really necessary, and you'll see later that I end up just kind of covering that up, so you can skip that step if you want. I'm outlining this first part of the wings using the flat edge of the brush. Then I'm bringing the brush kind of quickly in and out in jagged motions. Then I'm creating a line from the inner corner to that indent part of the wing. I wanted that indent a little bit deeper, so I fixed it real quick, and that's good just like that. And of course, we're gonna do that same thing on the other side. Using the same motions that we used for the top wing, we're gonna do the bottom wing and really emphasize those deep indents. So gradually coming in and then back out. Same, same on the other side. And I'll finish using this split cake by doing some streaks underneath those first orange lines that are there. And this will give it a cool kind of 3D effect. Now I'm just gonna outline the shape that we have here for the unicorn. I'm using a super tiny brush. This is the number zero from the face paint shop. Using a really small brush allows for a lot of control, but you do have to reload it a lot. So it might not be ideal for on the job. Um, a one or two brush can be really good for that. But yeah, if you're more comfortable with a smaller brush, then just use that. So perhaps you're wondering why I decided to do more of an in-depth tutorial on these at the end. And one reason is because I honestly had a really hard time seeing myself. I think using a handheld mirror in the future will solve that problem. But I had to keep looking down at my mirror after like every stroke that I did. And because of that, I had to add quite a bit of jump cuts in this video. And also, because I couldn't see super well, this isn't my ideal unicorn, to be honest. The unicorn at the end is, yeah, it's just more good. <laughs> the only big difference between this unicorn and the unicorn at the end is I did add some cute stripes to the horn of this instead of um, like a curve of a horn. That element of the design and the wings and also the curly part of the hat is all inspired by my very favorite artist, Amy Brown. Here I'm painting a bat across the bridge of my nose. I'm starting with kind of like a heart shape that doesn't have an indent at the top, using my brush to make sure that it aligns straight down the middle of my nose. Adding two little lines for the bat ears. And here I'm just creating a curved line and then basically a triangle that connects to the inner corner.
I'm quickly filling that in and then curving out that line just a little bit more. Finishing off by adding two little triangle shapes and curving out the top of the head. Now I'm going to quickly outline the wings using that same sort of jagged motion. Also going over that line that connects the inner corner to the wing. Now I'm using a bat stencil that I created myself. I'll link my other favorite bat stencil in the description for you guys. I'm making sure these bats are pointing towards the inner corner, which is the main focal point. I felt that I didn't have quite enough space in the eyes, so I'm fixing that right now with some wolf white. I'm also adding some highlights to the hair and to the witch hat, then grabbing some Maron silver for the belt buckle. Now that's pretty much it for this design. I am going to go in and fix just a few more things. I'm going to add a little line back in for this eye. I'm also shading by laying down some black and then blending that out with the back of the brush. By the way, I'm using wolf black. I decided to add just a little bit of blush with my finger. For some texture, I decided to add some splatter and I'm doing this by getting a very wet consistency with my black and just tapping on the brush where I want the splatter to go. I'm also doing this by hand for more precision by using a series of small dots. So that's it for this design. Oh, I forgot to mention that I added some lips. You can see how I do that on the last video. Okay, so now here's a quick split cake loading technique. Instead of dipping back into the water to reload, spraying only the sides of the brush and not the middle of the brush allows us to to build up the consistency without muddying. Sometimes only one side of the brush is still dry so we can just spray that side and load again. Moving on to the witch hat, we're going to start by laying this angled brush down flat and coming up to make a triangle shape. Lifting the back of the brush and just using the tip to finish off the triangle. Then just filling in the shape using the back of the brush. Now for the brim of the hat, just stamping the brush and dragging it. I'm making sure to keep the dark edge of the brush on the outside. With the dark side of the brush facing towards the hat, we're just going to stamp the brush for a thin line. Lifting up the back of the brush, we're going to stamp with the tip. We're going to start with our brush horizontal and pull it vertical to make a triangle shape. Loading this number zero brush with an inky consistency, Using the shape of this brush, we're going to lay it down on its side and drag it horizontally to create the band. Our light source will be coming from the top right, so we're going to shade what's on the opposite side of that, which is the left and bottom side. So our outline will effectively make a 3D shadow element. A very small line here is all we really need for the crease of the hat. I find square swirls like this to be even easier than a regular swirl. Just a few straight lines. The buckle is pretty simple as well just a square, and the lines on either side of the square will be a little thicker. For a more realistic effect for a highlight, I'm just making a slightly lighter color than what we already have out of neon green and neon yellow. I'm adding this to our light side, which is the top and the right of the hat, and I'm blending that color in using the back of the brush. Finishing it off with just a highlight above that crease that we put in, and the witch hat is all done. I hope that you guys like it. Moving on to the unicorn, we're going to start making an S shape uh, without the bottom of the S, and at the top of that S, we're just going to make a circle shape. From the middle of that circle, we can pull out the muzzle shape just using the width of this brush. I like to make my unicorn muzzle a little bit long, but you can make it shorter if you're going for more of a cute effect. Coming off from that circle that we created for the head, I'm just going to make the neck a little bit thicker and smooth out the base. Making the horn using the flat, sharp edge of the brush, turning it just slightly at the bottom to make that thicker. At about a 45 degree angle from the horn, we can stamp the brush and drag it to create a triangular shape. This should create a V shape in the negative space. Now I'm loading up the beautiful Neon Nirvana. We're going to start with one side of our brush, make a curve, and halfway through that curve, we're going to flip our brush to the other side. To get the hang of this, you can lift your brush before you flip it. We're going to use the same technique for the hair, but we're going to end it at a point, and each stroke should end pointing towards the same focal point at the base of the neck. We can use either the tip or the flat edge of the brush to fill in any empty spots. Here we're going to lay down our brush and then release pressure. Using a nice inky consistency, we're going to outline the shape that we've already created 
and about three quarters of the way down the muzzle, we're gonna come in with a curve to create the smile. And we're gonna wanna create a nice rounded shape for the jaw. This is something that I wish I would have done on the unicorn on my face. A little dot for the nose and another dot closer to the middle of the face. These dots should be aligned. And then we're gonna make a rainbow shape for the curve of the eye and then flick that out at the end. And another rainbow shape at the bottom to close that off. One more above the eye for the eyelid. And for the eyelashes, a series of big and small flicks using very little pressure. And then we're gonna give our unicorn some eyeliner. And then we're just gonna create a circle inside of this eye, making sure to leave some space. Now we can outline the ears and make a parallel curve line for the inside of the ears. Now it's really important for the horn to make two very straight lines. In hindsight, I would have made this horn a little smaller. We can make the curve of the unicorn horn using tiny tiger stripes around the mount using little boops. The tiger stripes start thin and then as we curve, we add pressure, finishing off thin. Now we're just gonna outline the whole outside of those hair strokes. Also where there's a little bit of a shadow in the middle of the hair. Also in between those lines, making sure to keep them parallel. We're gonna do the same thing with this tuft of the hair here, but just making sure to keep it very delicate and light. We can remove most of the paint from the brush to have a dry brush for shading. We can shade a little bit under the head, in the ear, and a little bit in the hair under those first lines that we outlined. To make more of a spooky eye, I'm gonna do just two small dots here. Bigger dots would give a cuter effect. To finish off, we'll highlight just above those middle lines. That's it. Happy Halloween, and I'll see you guys on the next video.